run an economy. Do we run an economy where the likes of Carillion, with apparently no assets and massive debts, continue to get government contracts? Do we force health and local government to contract out and privatise services? Do we allow our railways to be run by the private sector, our water industry, our mail service? Or do we say that under Labour, mail, rail and water will come back where they belong into the public ownership? And that it will be democratic and it will be well run and that we will harness the powers of investment open to government to establish a national investment bank for every part of the UK. And that national investment bank will invest in all parts of the country. Those that lost their jobs in the skilled industries that were destroyed by Margaret Thatcher and her government on that altar of free market have been replaced by the likes of Sport Direct zero hours contract, insecure work. What we will do is invest in long-term, secure, high-quality, decent employment with rights at work from day one on entering the workforce. Thanks for the gift, I'm not sure what it is. But it's also about winning people over to win that election. We unite people, we unite people to understand the kind of future that we want for this country. That high skilled, high, high technology, good quality jobs that are there for the future. That society that genuinely cares for all. And it's also about our relationships with the rest of the world to ensure that we do have tariff free trade with Europe and a customs union with the European Union to protect those jobs in Europe. Uh, and here. But it's also about the huge issues that every single one of us faces, the environmental crisis that is facing this planet. Donald Trump might want to walk away from the Paris Climate Change Agreement. We do not. We support it, we welcome it, we would work with it. And yesterday I was at the memorial service for the wonderful Stephen Hawking and at the end of it some of his words were read out in his own um, staccato voice that was given to him by a machine a man who lived to the age of 75 despite motor neuron disease and taught us all so much and gave us such a great legacy and what, what his last words were yes all the great scientific advances he had made but he said use science, use technology to understand each other and to protect our planet and protect our natural world and our environment. Use technology to support environmental sustainability. Because if we don't do that, then we all have problems in the future. Again, if you leave it to the market, you pollute the air, you pollute the river, you pollute the sea, you destroy the natural ecosystem and we end up wheezing our way through polluted cities and watching our rivers be polluted and our natural world disappear around us and we all suffer as a result of it. I want to lead a government that improves the living standards of the poorest in our society and protects our natural world and on the global stage has a very different role we want to be a government that says our primary concern around the world is human rights, equality, peace and justice. And that we do not see refugees as a threat. We see refugees as people who have suffered. created by the West. You look to the causes of war in order to prevent war in the future. But we do that by uniting amongst ourselves. Those that would seek to divide us 
those racists that would seek to divide us need to think about this for a moment. You can blame minority A for the cause of your problems. You then move on to minority B and you move on and on after that. At the end of that, you haven't built a school, built a house, trained a nurse, you haven't achieved any improvement in your society. All you've done is divided people with hate, with distaste, with disdain, and with nastiness. <laughs> On St George's Day 1977, the National Front, the fascists of their day, tried to march up Wood Green High Road to go on and hold a rally somewhere else. Some people said, let them march. They're only fascists, they're only Nazis, they'll go away. Some of us, all those years ago, said no, we are not prepared to allow our multicultural society to be, to be divided by these people. We will stand as a community in unity against them. Far right rise in Central Europe and other parts of the world has to be challenged. Challenged by recognizing we are different, we are diverse, we have different backgrounds, we come from different countries, we have different faiths, but our differences bring us together and make us stronger. We learn from each other, we learn from each other's achievements, we mourn each other's defeats and problems. But together, we're a very strong society. Never, ever allow any racist to divide us. We will never tolerate it.